Today, however, a very, very pleasant reading. 73 up in the Goodland area. I'm fairly positive that I've never been as tired as I was when I got into London yesterday. I was exhausted. But I'm here in Kent now. I'm in the town of Sherness, which is where Jody's family lives. And I got up at five to take Jody to work. And I figured, you know what? There's no better way to cure jet lag than go out and shoot some pictures. So I'm gonna go down to the beach here in Sherness and grab a couple shots. So I don't think you're gonna be able to see me because it's still pitch black. It's still like maybe oh, 45 minutes until sunrise. But let me walk you through my thought process for this morning shoot here on the beach in Sherness. I'm definitely, definitely not gonna get light this morning. There's clouds on the horizon and blue skies, which is like a double negative. You get clouds on the, clouds on the horizon, you don't get the sun popping through right at sunrise. And when you get blue skies, you don't have any clouds to light up. So I'm gonna aim for like a minimalist style image this morning. I might even switch something to black and white, which is something I no, don't normally do. But you've got all these pillars in the water here in Sherness along the beach that lead right out into the sea. And I think that I can use those for like a long exposure minimalist style photo. So I'm gonna go find a cool line, set up the gear, and then try to grab that image. So as expected, the light went flat on me really quick. The sun's still not even up and it's just, it's not gonna get good in terms of light this morning, but I still think I got a couple cool images. I was shooting about 30 seconds or a minute. I've gone as much as three minutes just to get this really smoothed out water. But without anything in the sky happening, it's a little bit bland and will have to be that simplified minimalist um, type of landscape photography. I talk about this a lot, or I try to talk about this a lot. There's always something to shoot. No matter what the weather, no matter whether you get light, no matter what, there's always a shot you can make. Every single day, no matter what's happening, no matter where you are, there's always a shot to be made. I think it's so easy to make excuses, but at the end of the day, there's always a photo to be had. I've got a lot of work to do today. I've got to do a lot of catching up on the vlog and stuff like that, so I'm gonna drive to like, I don't know, somewhere to get some work done. And then I'm gonna go pick up Jody in London and we're heading to the Jurassic Coast today. And no precipitation, we're about a half inch behind, correction, half inch ahead for the year and one and 53 hundredths behind for the, for the year so far. We'll be looking for a little bit of a change tomorrow and of course the possibility of some scattered showers. Today, of course, there's nothing showing up on the radar. However, the satellite photo was pretty interesting for the western half of the US. Rain showers and thunder showers. The full moon over there this morning is all sorts of crazy. If you guys are ever wondering how to get great full moon photos if you want more than just the moon try to time it when it's a full moon and that full moon is happening right around sunrise or sunset and you get it right on the horizon like that wow it looks amazing i wish i would have planned that that would have been a cool photo this morning but yeah happy with the way things went this morning anyway beautiful place here on the beach in Sherness, and I guess it's time to get some work done. Now, however, it's moving into the central part of the nation with a couple of high pressure sex cells behind it. done my work. I actually love 
working in common spaces and like cafes and stuff like that because I'm like a billion times more productive. If I'm at home, I get distracted or if I'm in like a hotel room, I start watching Netflix or I start messing around. When I'm in public, I feel like I have to be working. You can't sit in a cafe and watch Game of Thrones. So I was really productive this morning. I feel like the jet lag's already kicked, which is awesome because I just arrived yesterday and now I'm heading into downtown to pick up Ali Jode. Let's go. So Jody's arrived and she's bearing gifts. It's my new camera bag. And it's like a two hour drive now to the Jurassic Coast and there's no way we're gonna make it anywhere to shoot sunset. So I think instead what we're gonna do is when we get into the Jurassic Coast, I'll set up this camera bag. I'll show you how I'm gonna set up all my camera gear in this new bag. This bag's a Manfrotto and I can't remember the style or whatever. But I'll let you guys know once we get to the Jurassic Coast. Let's hit the road. Okay guys, we got in really late last night, so I didn't film this, obviously, just because there wasn't, you know, light in the room. This is my old bag. This is my Think Tank Heli Pack, and I loved this bag, and I still love this bag, but the big issue with this bag is that it doesn't have, like, padding on the bottom of the bag in the bottom part, so you can't add your own like um, whatever you call these things, the dividers. So I had to like upgrade the whole new bag. I also wanted something that was a little bit more practical that had different spaces for different things because in this bag, anytime I wanted to pull something out, I had to open the whole thing to get at it. So after a lot of research online, I went with this Manfrotto bag. And this Manfrotto camera bag, which I have no idea the name of it, but it'll be in the description of this video is much more practical, but it is a smaller bag. If I put the two together, it doesn't look that much smaller, but you can see here, it's like, what is that, like four fingers more shallow, and it makes a huge difference in the fact that now I can't keep my camera lenses upright. They have to be laying down, so it's much tighter. But that's what I wanted, so it actually packs really tightly and perfect and all my gear is in here now. There are a couple issues to the bag and I'm gonna talk about them at the end but I wanna show you the setup right now. So I'm actually going to point the camera downwards now and show you the insides of the bag and how I've got it all set up. So one of the things I love about this bag is that I can get at things in different places. So the bag in total has this huge insert here that I can actually pull out for some reason or whatever reason, if I wanted, I can pull out the entire insert and use the bag for something else. But the way it's designed is really, really clever actually. So I've got here at the back, this is the main camera pouch. The insert kind of like opens up in here and it's covered here. So if I wanted to take it out, I could, or it folds open and I've got my camera equipment here. So I've got my 16 to 35, on my 6D in here. I've got my 70 to 200 here. I've got my 14 millimeter there and my 50 millimeter here. And I've got a little space here which I can put my GoPro or I can put the Sony camera as well. And so that's like the main camera section. If we flip it open, this is what I love about this bag is it's the same insert, but at the top I can get something really quick. So I put my drone up here. I've got the Mavic up top. I've got Mavic batteries, I've got the Mavic controller, and it's all right there. So if I need something quick, I can grab it. I could also, if I didn't have my Mavic out, put like my filters in there or something else. So really practical to have two different spaces. Then up front, there's a pocket right here. And in here I have another Mavic battery. I have some GoPro accessories and my extra batteries in here. That's really easy to access, quick to access. Here I've got another pouch. And in this pouch, I don't have anything right now, but I could put like a rain jacket or something in there. And then you've got this side pouch here. In the side pouch, I have my filters. I have more filters. And then there's also a laptop pouch in there 
everything that I travel with or everything I shoot with fits in this bag. This will be this will come with me on the airport, on the airplane, I should say. Um, now let's talk about like a couple of the negatives of this bag. The biggest, and I don't understand why they do this. There's meant to be a tripod here. In the pictures, when you buy the bag, it shows the tripod hooked up here, but it looks like you actually have to buy an accessory to attach the tripod on. And one of the biggest reasons of switching from this bag to this bag was I wanted to be able to hold my tripod on it, and it doesn't come with the accessory. I need to buy that extra, and that's just silly. Why don't they just sell it with the tripod attachment? <sighs> Drives me crazy. Um, the other small thing is the back. The back of the bag is very flat and it's very much like you can feel the cameras there whereas compared to my other bag it's got this perforated back and it's really soft and this bag was actually really easy to carry long time for a long time this bag looks like it's probably going to be kind of uncomfortable to use long distance it also doesn't look like it's going to breathe at all so those are the two issues but overall i'm like super stoked the bag is smaller my load is really light Everything is like, I feel like I've lost three kilos of weight and it feels like it's more functional. It feels like I've got a little bit more like, I don't know. It just feels better. I'm stoked with the new bag. I just got to get the tripod thing sorted out. And as I mentioned, we're here in the Jurassic Park now. Today's vlog, which will go tomorrow. Uh, what? Jurassic Park. <laughs> Jody's in the corner <laughs> laughing at me because I just said Jurassic Park instead of Jurassic Coast. We're here in the Jurassic Coast, although I really wish we were at Jurassic Park. We're in the Jurassic Coast. It's a little bit overcast today, but on tomorrow's vlog, we're going to be exploring here in the Jurassic Coast, shooting some photography, using this bag, and yeah, I'm stoked to be here. I'm stoked for the new bag, and I guess I'll see you on tomorrow's episode from here in Jurassic Park. We're gonna go look for those little little T-Rex things. Babies. Baby T-Rexes? What are they called? Velociraptors. We're gonna go look for Velociraptors. I'll see you guys on that episode. Peace. Western portions of Montana, down to western sections of Nevada, and of course the massive high, picking up warm moist air from the south, bringing it northward. So when the two masses collide over Kansas, we